Well, today we're studying the book of Revelation, especially Revelation chapter 4. And I'd like you to think with me about the introduction that the Lord gives to the Apostle John. Have you ever thought about what it's like when your whole world is spinning out of control? I mean, John's was spinning out of control. Uh, he was an exile on Patmos. Uh, he had been exiled on Patmos by a Roman emperor who made it his personal ambition to hunt down Christians. All the apostles had been hunted down and all of them were gone, uh, martyred and sent to heaven. And one was left and that was John. And John was found where he had been living at Ephesus and was arrested and taken to this colony, island of, of exile, and even possibly a prison colony where he was doing hard labor. And he was very, very elderly and feeble and frail probably that comes when you get to be 80 or 90 years old. And so there he is, his city, Jerusalem, destroyed. His people, the Jewish people, martyred by the massacred by the Roman legionnaires. So what does God think he needs? chapter 4. Look at this. After these things, I looked and beheld a door standing open in heaven. Now remember, John is narrating this. This is a personal visit by Jesus Christ to the Apostle John on the island of Patmos. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here and I will show you the things which must take place after this. And immediately I was in the Spirit. And look, behold, a throne set in heaven. That's what God wanted John to see, that God was still seated on the throne, even though his life was endangered, even though all of his fellow apostles were killed by the Roman Empire, even though his beloved people and his beloved city and the temple of God were all destroyed, God was still on the throne. The lesson for us is, often when our world around us is spinning, often when, well, like COVID and and financial problems and people worried about their health and, and many people are concerned about our culture disintegrating with all the vaccine mandates and, and I could go on and on. It seems like everything is out of control. It might have seemed like that a little bit to the Apostle John, like everything was spinning out of control. So what did God show him? And he who sat there, verse 3 of Revelation 4, was like Jasper and a Sardis stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance. And around the throne, 24 thrones. And on the thrones, I saw 24 elders. And look at verse 5. From the throne proceeded lightnings and thunders and voices. And seven lamps of fire were bur burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Verse six, and before the throne, there was a sea of glass like crystal. And in the midst of the throne, do you notice how often throne, 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 throne? You see, God wanted John to see that he was still seated on the throne, that everything wasn't out of control, that, that the martyrdom of all the apostles was part of his plan, and the destruction of Jerusalem was a part of his plan, and that John's exile was part of his plan, and that living through one of the greatest global shakeups of the last maybe 100 years, the whole COVID thing, is part of his plan. I'd like to read to you the lesson that I sent out to all the students that are taking the Revelation course. And I'm just going to share it with you as the introduction to chapter 4. And this is what I wrote. Number one, God was ruling from his throne when Domitian exiled John to Patmos. All the scenes of Revelation 1 to 3 are given on the island of Patmos between Roman Asia, which would be, we would call it modern Turkey, and the Greece area that we would see from Paul's missionary journeys. John was a prisoner of the Roman Emperor Domitian who ruled from AD 81 to 96. Now here's the lesson. God was on his throne while John was exiled, while Domitian persecuted the church, while there were provincial purges of the churches and believers. But not only was it going on to John, it was going on to all the believers in those seven churches that were going to be written to in chapters two and three. Domitian banished the last living disciple of Christ, the Apostle John, to Patmos. John was living and pastoring in Ephesus when he was in prison. And at Domitian's death in AD 96, John was able to return back to live his final days. 
among the dear saints of Ephesus, God was still on the throne when the Emperor Domitian exiled John to Patmos. Secondly, God was ruling from his throne when Vespasian designed the Colosseum. Oh, did you notice what's behind me? I wanted that as a backdrop for you because I would like you to think about that large uh, mass, the Colosseum, the most well-known object here in Rome. I want you to think about that and then think of something bigger that's overshadowing everything in life. Just like everything in the frame that you're looking at as I talk has the Colosseum, everything in life has the throne of God overshadowing it. But God was on the throne while the Emperor Vespasian designed what would later become such a place of martyrdom for believers. Number three, God was ruling from the throne when Titus ordered the destruction of a million Jews, the temple, and the city of Jerusalem. And Domitian's brother was the Roman Emperor Titus who ruled from 79 to 81 and is most remembered as the Roman general who destroyed Jerusalem in AD 70. God was still on the throne when Jerusalem was destroyed, when its inhabitants were massacred, when the church was scattered to the furthest corners of the world. But you know what the lesson is for us? God is still on the throne today. We could put in any disaster. We could put in the, the COVID uh, spread. We could put in the financial tremors that are going around the world. Everything that's going on, God is still on the throne. The vision of Christ in Revelation 1, the letters to the seven churches in Revelation 2 and 3 are literal events with letters to historic places that are still identifiable today by their geographic ruins. But the sights and sounds of Revelation 4 and 5 are equally real, equally vividly literal as God is still on the throne. God is still ruling no matter what goes on in the world, just like he communicated to John right here in Revelation 4. And just like the Apostle Paul knew as he behind me and, and a little bit further back was imprisoned at Mamertine, just like the Apostle Peter knew when way back behind me at the Circus of Nero, he was martyred. God was on the throne. Just because the world's falling apart doesn't mean God isn't orchestrating, overseeing, and directing the courses of human history. As believers, we need to live and act and think and process life through the frame of knowing that just like the Colosseum is kind of overshadowing me and everything I say right now, that the throne of the God of the universe he is still seated there and before that throne is perfect peace and tranquility and all of the angels and all of the singing and all of the saints and that whole picture of revelation is going on right now. And that's what God wants us to think about when our world seems to be tumbling and spinning and seems to be out of control. God says, no, it's under my control. Mm -hmm.